everyone. I'm glad that you can join us. My name is Cyrus. I'm so glad that I can have this opportunity with you today to interact with you around the Word of God because the Word of God has got power to change your life and my life. I want you to make a watch party and share this important teaching today because I believe it's going to change our lives. And I know that God is going to fill us with um, a lot of wisdom and understanding in this important discourse today. Let's make a prayer before we go any further. Heavenly Father, we now ask that God you give us clarity of speech and that God you give us a heart to understand. For faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Lord, we pray may you bring understanding to the hearer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to teach an important subject today. I am calling it serving God in an abusive system. Serving God in an abusive system. I want to begin by saying that God did not promise that we will have a conducive moment and environment and a system in which we can serve God. All what God said is that we ought to serve him. How do we serve him? It doesn't matter the circumstances around our lives. Israel served God in Egypt. It was not a very um, conducive environment, but they still served God. Israel served God in Babylon. When they were in exile, they still served God. So you all have to serve God wherever you are. It doesn't need to be a place where you are comfortable, where everyone is laughing at you, where everyone is welcoming you, where everyone is understanding that is not the case. Serving God in an abusive system. I want to stress that uh, so often than not, we find ourselves in a situation where it feels like it is impossible for us to serve God. It could be at your place of work. It could be in your marriage. It could be in your church. Let's talk about your church. It could be that maybe you don't get along with your leaders. You don't get along with the pastor's wife. You don't get along with the pastor himself. You don't get along with the elders and the deacons and the zone leader, whatever you can call it. But service is required. In fact, I'm not encouraging that you should have um, those differences with your leaders. It's not supposed to be so. But even when they are impossible to live with, you still have to serve God. So serving God in an, abuse, uh, in an, uh, an, an abusive system. The, we are going to center our discourse today around 1 Samuel chapter 1 and chapter 2. That's where we get the understanding of what we're talking about. 1 Samuel chapter 1, from the beginning, we are presented with a challenge. It is not a, a conducive environment or moment that we are presented with in the very beginning of the book of 1 Samuel. The problem is that there is a woman by the name of Hannah who had no child. Whereas the other woman who, uh, because Hannah was married to Elkanah, Elkanah had two wives. He had Hannah and Penina. Now, Hannah had no child. Penina had children. So that was a problem. But what we notice is that every year, um, this family went to the temple to offer sacrifices. Please note that it was not just Penina and Elkanah who went to worship. Hannah, the one who had no child, who was ever crying, who was ever with a bitter heart or a heavy heart because she didn't have a child, also went alongside of them. Meaning, meaning that even with a heavy heart, we have to worship God. Even when things are not going according to plan, we have to worship God. So we see this problem right at the beginning of the first book of Samuel. It is a problem. In fact, let me say that the anointing is about solving problems. Let me say that... Uh, your, your ministry is about solving problems. Your ministry is not to be in a place where there are no problems because if there are no problems, there is no chance for ministry. Ministry is about resolving challenges and problems. So, serving God in an abusive system. You may be in a place which is abusive. In fact, I'm going to say quite a lot about that issue because it is prevailing and we cannot turn a black eye or a blind. We see it in every moment, at every corner, every juncture, we see it is there. So what we notice here is that 
Hana, Elkanah, the Israelites, and of course we're going to come to Samuel himself, began their ministry. We are serving God under a system that was not right. Remember, Eli was the priest during this moment. But Eli had children who were not conducting themselves well. Let me say that under the leadership of Eli, we see the degradation, we see the compromise and the destruction of the priesthood that God had established over Israel. Because uh, Eli could not control his sons, the two sons. He couldn't control them. So they brought the standards of worship down, the standards of service down. People shunned, we are going to get there, people shunned service because of the way they treated people and how they conducted themselves. So we have um, a, a moment when Israel is serving God under a very, very difficult situation. But just take note that it was during the same moment when Eli was priest, when the word of the Lord had become rare, it is during the same moment that people shunned sacrifices, shunned going to the altars of God because they were abused when they went there. It was during the same moment that Hannah, please put this on record, during the same period, Hannah prayed for a child and the child was given. In other words, during an abusive moment, during a moment that we feel like we don't need to do anything because everything is upside down, there's destruction, there is abuse, there is misappropriation, there is corruption, you mentioned it all. In that same moment, when Hannah prayed, God heard her. In your moment right now, it could be that things are not going well at your church. It could be that things are not going well in your marriage. Things are not going well in your business. When you pray in the same moment, in the same season of confusion, God will hear you. God does not hear you and answer you when everything is okay. When there is conduciveness, God answers us in our distress. That is one important thing about God. And God will answer you out of your trouble. So, we see, a, 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 in fact, let me say that during this same moment, there was a wicked system which was serving a righteous God. There was a wicked system that was put in place, and through the same wicked system, uh, people had to serve God. What am I saying? The, priest, the priesthood is destroyed. The, 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 the tenants of service are destroyed, but still people have to communicate with God. Through a corrupt system that is put in place, still people have to communicate with God. Let me give you an example. The Bible says uh, people preach for different reasons. There are those who preach for their gain. There are those who preach out of hypocrisy. But the Bible says still Christ is preached. Even through uh, people who preach with manipulation and everything, the bottom line is Christ is preached. Am I concerned about people who do such things? Yes, I am. But we may not stop them. We can let them go on. In fact, we cannot afford and we cannot manage to stop them. They, they'll continue doing it. But remember, although they are abusing people, although they are being dishonest, although they are doing things that are not right, the bottom thing is that Christ is is preached. It may not be in the proper way, but Christ is preached. So during the same time of, um, of Eli, when he's priest, still the gospel or the ministry was being discharged. Because still a number of people are going to the temple. Regardless of the evils that were happening, uh, people could still go to the temple and offer sacrifices. But what we notice again is that according to First, uh, first Samuel chapter 1, and verse 17, this has to do with uh, how a woman who is with a heavy heart, a woman who, who needs a prayer, approaching a priest who has run down the priestly uh, order, who has run down the, the order of worship, still, it, it, this is very important, Hannah is approached by a priest who has run down the system, who has run down the, the proper way of worship. But the Bible says when Hannah was uh, approached by Eli, because Eli thought that she was drunk, when Hannah explained the condition to a priest, and the priest said, may God grant you your desires, 
The Bible says it was so because immediately Hannah conceived. And after nine months, she gave birth to a child or a man child. What am I saying? Still, um, God can answer us through people who are abusive. God can still answer us. And I am not saying they are right. What I'm trying to say is that the abuse or the systems that are there should not deter you from serving God because the issue of service is a personal thing. It's got nothing to do with who is standing in your way. It's got nothing to do with who is applauding you. It's got nothing to do with uh, who is against you or who offended you. It has to do with you and your God. So the word abuse means misuse. It means exploitation. It means manipulation. It also means misapplication. So what, it, what again we see is that in church today, and I, I am, I am uh, saying this with a heavy heart, that there are so many churches today that are misusing the word of God. There are so many churches that are exploiting God's people. There are so many ministers that are manipulating God's people. There are so many organizations that are misapplying what the word of God instructs us to do. But all in all, through all this, through all this now, listen, we don't throw the baby together with the water. We throw the water and remove the baby. So we cannot throw away service just because there is abuse. In fact, again, what we notice is that the Bible says that the sons of Eli were corrupt. That is found in uh, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 12. The Bible says, now the sons of Eli were corrupt. They did not know the Lord. Now, let me explain this. This is very important. So the sons of Eli were corrupt, and the Bible says they did not know the Lord. So what happens here is that these sons of Eli are priests. They are, they are serving with their, God, with their father in the priest's office. So these are priests who don't know the Lord. And th 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 that you begin to wonder, so how is that? Remember, the, priestly, the, the priesthood was by appointment. Actually, it ran through uh, a tribe. So what happens is they automatically became priests. But they did not know the Lord. I, I please put this on record. They are people who are preaching their people who are serving, and yet they don't know the Lord. They are people who are singing in the worship team. They are people who are serving in church in various portfolios in the hospitality, yet they do not know the Lord. They're doing it. So we have a situation where the priesthood does not know the Lord. It cannot relate with God. What, what, what a sad story. They were corrupt and they did not know the Lord. So what do you expect people to become? What do you expect the outcome to be? But thanks be unto God because we have established that through the same confusion, Hannah received her prayer her answer to her prayer. Hannah received answers to her prayer. You will receive answers to your prayer. Listen, man cannot deter you from saving God. I'm going to say this again. And there are some of you, there are some of you who are saying, I have stopped giving because I just enrich the pastor. It, you, you think the pastor uh, uses your money, you, you think there's no accountability and everything like that. Now, I, I've, I, let me give you a pastoral counsel. If you are under a system that you don't trust, especially when it misappropriates, if you think they abuse the funds, instead, because when you become, um, you become a bitter soul, you will not be blessed. So watch the best thing for you to do. You need to move out of that system. Go find a system that you'll be comfortable with. Now, I'm going to say something. I know where I'm going with this. Listen, if you don't trust the church you are, uh, you are operating under, you're serving under, instead of you serving God whilst complaining, it's better you move out, find another church that you'll be comfortable serving under. Please understand this. Because God does not receive service 
of complaint or of backbiting because you end up backbiting. You end up uh, spreading wrong information. So if you're not comfortable where you are, move, find another place. However, most people that we find who talk about abuses, who talk about them, stop giving because the pastor uh, eats all their money, most of them have got a problem. Most people who say that have got a problem. I hope you are saying that not because you have a problem. I hope you're saying that from a pure heart because such people will never find a place where they will settle. Even when they move to another place, they'll go and find something to talk about. So make sure that what you're complaining about is genuine. Make sure that your concerns are genuine and they're proven, not that you think it happens like that. So you have to, to be careful with that. But God still will use you. God will still answer you. So no matter how bad the system is, God can still get through to you and God can help you. So the Bible says the sons of Eli uh, were corrupt. What does it mean to be corrupt? To be corrupt means dishonesty. Uh, corruption means dishonesty. It means exploitation. It means bribery. It means fraud, it means depravity, it means per pervasion, it also means immorality. So the priesthood at this moment was dishonesty. The priesthood at this moment, uh, of course, was dishonest, uh, was dishonest, but it was also in a system of exploitation. It exploited the offerers or the worshippers because we find this when... We come into chapter 2 and verse 22. The Bible says, Now Eli was very old and he heard everything his sons did to all Israel and how they lay with the women who assembled at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. So what they did was when women came to offer sacrifices, they committed adultery with them. Not only that, we see again that... Um, um, what they did was when people came with their offerings, they grabbed meat from them before it was, uh, it was boiled or before fat was removed from there because according to, to the law, fat needed to be removed from the, uh, from, from the meat before someone could eat because, in fact, after they presented it and after they offered the sacrifice and boiled whatever they had to do, um, still there was a portion that was supposed to go to the priest, but they could not wait for that. They said, give it to me as raw as it is and stuff like that. So they, this was a very exploit, um, a system of exploitation. It was fraud, there was bribery, there was uh, perversion. They perverted the system of worship. But in all this, I'm going to show you this towards the end. I'm running towards the end. I'll show you something. In all this, in all this, God was still God. You may be uh, feeling like there's no point of going to church. Listen to me, God is still God. Listen to me, God is still in charge. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. And you are the church that God is, is building. You are the church that God is constructing with care. You are the church that God is counting on. In the midst of all this, please hear me, in the midst of all these happenings, there was a remnant. You might be the remnant. Right now, it, it's just like we have read from the word of God that people could not go or people shunned the services. People shunned the sacrifices because of the mismanagement of the temple. I, I want to say that we are at the moment, at the time that it becomes very difficult for people to trust the clergy. When you say, I'm a pastor, people immediately make conclusions around you. You don't want to be identified that way. So we are at that moment, but I want to put this on record that yes, there are so many wolves who are out there, but there are so many sheep that are out there as well. Not every man of God you find is fraudulent. Not every man of God you find is dishonest. Not every man of God you find is manipulative. They are those who are genuine and who are sincere. And you are the, one of the people that God is raising. You, even in your service, you have to do it now. Listen to me. You can complain about the system under which you are serving. Yet you yourself, you might be ex exploiting other people. You might not be sincere in, with what you do. You may be serving out of hypocrisy. And listen to me, we don't use service as a stepping thing for 
our personal gain. Service is for the Lord. We don't serve so that we can gain something in the process. That's not why we serve. We serve because we are commanded to serve. However, service promotes you. All right? So you serve because God said so, and you serve because you love God. Even when a promotion does not come, you still serve God. But if you are just serving for promotion, when promotion delays, you stop serving. So you may be serving God with wrong reasons. Make sure that your reasons are okay. So we are talking about serving God in an abusive system. A system does not need to be conducive in order for you to serve God. So like we have established, Hannah had a breakthrough to her need when she was operating. Of course, she was operating under an abusive system during that moment. But what's important to me is that Hannah did not get a breakthrough to her needs without checking her motive. Look at chapter 1 and verse 11. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 11. Because you understand and you must really uh, see that for a long period of time, Hannah has got no children. She doesn't have any child. And she has been praying, but God did not answer her prayer. God only answered her prayer. Watch this. Of course, other people, especially those with uh, an abusive uh, approach, would tell you that Hannah received, only received her answer uh, to her prayer because she came into contact with the man of God. That is not the reason why Hannah received the, the answer to her prayer. It, the, 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 the reason why God answered Hannah's prayer is in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11. And I read, of course, before this, Hannah has been praying. God has not answered her. Verse 11 says, Then Hannah made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maid servant and remember me and not forget your maid servant, but will give your maid servant a male child. Here it comes now. Here it comes. Why God answered her? She says, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head. So Hannah received an answer to her prayer because she checked the motives behind. She, she cleared any, uh, any um, hypocrisy around the prayer. She, she presented it. When she got it right, let me put it this way. When Hannah got it right in her spirit, she realized that Oh, all along, my prayer has been about me. It's been about uh, me having a child so that I can get even with Penina, uh, who is bothering me. She, 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 all along, she wanted to have children so that Penina can know that she can also bear children. And God did not answer that prayer. The motive was wrong. God only answered the prayer when she said, oh, Lord, now I get it. You're not answering me because my prayer is self-centered. She says, when you give me this child, I will give him back to you all the days of his life. In other words, she said, Lord, my need is your need. Or the answer to my need will be yours. Glory and honor will be given to you. So what Hannah said was, I am not going to keep this child to myself, but I'll give him back to you. And that's why you see that when, whenever Samuel was weaned, and I believe he should be in, at a very, very tender age, after he was weaned, he was presented in the temple and he was given to the Lord in the temple. He never left the temple. So Hannah did not have any much experience with this child. Why? Because she said, whatever you give me, God, I'll give it back to you. You may be seeking God for something. I want you to use this scripture. Hannah said, if you give me this, I will give it back to you. Remember, Jacob said the same. When he was running from his brother Esau, he said, God, if you will indeed protect me and be with me, then whatever, whatever I'm going to have, whatever you bless me with, I'll give you a tenth of it. This was before the law. 
It was before the law when he said that. So, uh, child of God, hear me. Whatever you are seeking the Lord for, whatever you are seeking the Lord for, it may delay if your motive is wrong. So Hannah worked on the motive. Then the answer came. What do we mean by motive? What does the word motive mean? Motive means reason, the reason behind your asking, the reason why you want what you want. It means the cause, it means purpose, it means motivation, it means intention, it also means the aim. Why do you need what you need? If there is no proper, proper reason for that, then God is not really interested in that. Let me conclude this way. Under the same abusive system that we're talking about, under a very tough situation to serve the Lord, we see Samuel was born. Not only was he born, but we see the birth of his ministry. Please, let's look at chapter 2 and verse 18 of 1 first, of, uh, first Samuel. Chapter 2 and verse 18. This is important that you realize this because um, maybe for the sake of clarity, for the sake of clarity, let me just begin at verse 12. I'll begin at verse 12, and then I'll, I'll also read verse 22 so that you understand the situation that is happening here. The Bible says, The sons of Eli were corrupt. They did not know the Lord. And the priests' custom uh, with the people was that when any man offered the sacrifice, the priest's servants would come with a three a plunged flesh hook in his hand while the meat was boiling. Then he would thrust it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot and the priest and the priest would take for himself all that the, uh, the flesh hook brought up. So they did in Shiloh to all the, uh, the Israelites who came there. Also, also, before they burnt the fat, the priests, uh, the priest servants would come and say to the man who sacrificed, give me meat for roasting to the priest. Sorry, give meat for roasting to the priest, for he will not take boiled meat from you, but raw. And if the man said to him, they should Really burn the fat first, then you may take as much as your heart desires. He would then answer him, no, but you must give it now. And if not, I will take it by force. I will take it by So this is a system, please understand. Then verse 17 says, Therefore the sin of the young man was very great before the Lord, for men abhorred the offering of the Lord. Men shunned going to the temple to offer sacrifices and offerings. Verse 18. In the midst of all what is going on. Maybe before we read verse 18. Let's skip to verse 22. Verse 22 says, Now Eli was very old and he heard everything his sons did to all Israel. And how they lay with women who assembled at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. Not only did they abuse the sacrifices, but they went and slept with the women who came to offer sacrifices. So it is a very uh, wrong, moment, uh, wrong situation that is going on. But in spite of this, verse 18. Look at verse 18. This is my message today. In the midst of all this, the Bible says, but Samuel, but Samuel, but Samuel, but you, but Samuel ministered before the Lord. But Samuel ministered before the Lord. But Samuel ministered before the Lord. But you minister before the Lord. In the midst of oppression, in the midst of uh, corruption, in the midst uh, of uh, exploitation, in the midst of uh, dishonest, in the midst of fraud, in the midst of perversion, in the midst of immorality, in the midst of uh, misapplication, in the midst of uh, um, uh, manipulation, and you mentioned it all, in the midst of all this, Samuel ministered before the Lord. But Samuel ministered before the Lord. 
even as a child. And please understand, at this juncture, at this moment, Samuel was still very young. So all the old people, the old priest Eli, he is not taking charge as a priest. His sons are corrupt, who are supposed to be a, 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 the role model to Samuel. But Samuel is not influenced by that now. Let me say something important here. There are so many people in church, you might be one of them, who have been influenced negatively by other people who are complaining, other people who don't give, other people who don't love their pastors, who don't speak well of their pastors. You are influenced by people who, don't, uh, who are not on time to church. You are influenced by big so casual, you have been influenced wrongly. Samuel was not influenced by Hophni. Samuel was not influenced by uh, Phineas and, 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 and so on. He remained truthful. He remained faithful. Will you remain faithful? Please, the, the, the issue of you saying uh, everyone is like this is not an excuse for you. It's not an excuse. Will you serve the Lord? Will you stand out like Samuel did? Samuel had all the, in fact, all the examples before him. The people were above him. The people he was looking up to. The people who were teaching him ministry. Let me put it this way. The people who were teaching him ministry, the people who were mentoring him, were wicked. But Samuel still chose to be righteous. I'm getting excited because of this important thing. So we see the birth of the ministry of Samuel. It was not corrupt. It was not out of manipulation. It was not deceptive. It was pure. In the midst of pressure, while everyone is doing manipulations and gymnastics, you can do ministry. You can minister. You can serve without all this and still stand out. In fact, let me say that. The righteous will always stand out. You may be living in obscurity at the moment. You, not, you may not be observed or noticed, but you will stand out. The time is coming. Some of you have been giving faithfully. You've been serving the Lord faithfully. You've been there. You've been praying. You have been in the temple. I promise you, it's just a matter of time. You'll be revealed. Don't be influenced by the sons of Eli. Don't be influenced by Eli. Don't be influenced by any wrong system. Serve the Lord with sincerity of heart. So not only do we see the birth of the ministry of Samuel, but we also notice the success or the growth and establishment of his ministry. We are going to see this in chapter, in chapter number 3 of First Samuel, chapter 3, verse 19 through verse 21. And I'm going to close. The Bible says, so Samuel, now, you understand, please you understand the words of the scripture. It is during the same wrong system. The Bible says, so Samuel grew. And the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel had been established as a prophet of the Lord. Then the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord had revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Now understand, it is during this moment, uh, this season of abuse, season that is very difficult, that Samuel would, it would become very difficult for him to say, I am a man of God. The Bible says, then so Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. God started establishing Samuel during a corrupt and a very abusive moment. Listen to me. Samuel was brought in as a child. Samuel did not have so much input from his parents. Everything Samuel learned, he learned it in the temple. But Samuel had the wisdom and the will to distinguish between corruption and something that is genuine. Samuel had it in himself to realize that I cannot follow wrong patterns. There are so many people who have been following wrong patterns. You have been following wrong people. You have been following wrong leaders. It's high time you cleanse yourself. It's high time you found people that you can be found with. But if there's no one, please purpose in your heart not to defy yourself. The Bible says, and Daniel purposed in, in his heart, purposed within himself not to defile himself with the king's portion of meat. Will you choose to step here?
Will you choose to stay honest? I know right now it's very difficult to live an honest life. It's, for you ladies, it's very difficult to, to stay pure without being involved in sexual activities. It, it is very difficult for us pastors to preach without manipulation because money is not coming without manipulation. But I would rather stay poor. I would, and please put me on record, I'm saying this. I would rather stay pure, a, a poor than being rich using manipulation because one day I will give an account before the Lord. So Samuel grew because he came as a child. So he grew in the temple, but still grew up because he chose not to stand his life. And the Lord was with him. And because of that, the Bible says God did not let any single word from the mouth of uh, Samuel fall to the ground without yielding anything. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel had been established as a prophet. Listen to me. From the north to the south, from the west to the east, people know that you've been established by the Lord. Because God always brings up the righteous. Listen to me. Righteousness always comes to the top. Righteousness comes to the top. Righteousness comes to the top. Righteousness comes to the top. God rewards faithfulness. And God will reward you. God will reward you. He will not judge you together with the wicked. And he will not let his name be tarnished because of what you're going through. God will establish you. God will protect you. And God will set you on high. I'm glad you joined me on this important teaching today. And I know that God has spoken to you. My challenge to you is, you need to purpose in your heart to serve God with a pure heart. And I know you are doing that. And I know you will lose everything for the purity of your heart. I want us to pray together. Heavenly Father, we pray and thank you, Lord, for this important uh, moment you gave us, Lord God, to look into your word. Thank you for this teaching. Lord, raise men and women who will not corrupt themselves. Raise men and women, boys and girls, Lord, who will not bow their knee to bow. But Lord Jesus Christ, they will sanctify themselves. They will represent you well. Lord, I pray for a remnant. And I pray for those that are weak in their faith because they seem to be out of fashion. They seem to be uh, out of, of, of what is trending. But God, I pray, strengthen them and keep them strong and faithful in Jesus' name. I want to invite you, my brother, my sister, wherever you're watching this broadcast from, you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You are not uh, at peace with God. I want to give you this opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want you to pray with me. It is a simple prayer. You don't need to do anything. Just pray this prayer and believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth. You are a child of God. Pray with me and say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for dying for me. And I thank you for forgiving my sins. I thank you for making me your child. Thank you, Lord, because I am a child of God today. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you are a child of God. Please contact us. There are numbers that are on the screen right now. Please write back to us on Facebook. We want to get in touch with you and interact a little more with you. We love you. Thank you for joining us. And all of you that are within Kitwe, Copper Belt, or you are visiting in this region, please do visit our services here at Victory Bible Church every Sunday morning at 8.30. We are situated right behind CBU off Chuala Road, CBU Eastgate. You are welcome and we're looking forward to seeing you. You are special to us. We say we love you until we see you again at the same time. We say bye-bye and shalom for now. Yeah.